service taken from our own historical records dated back in February 14, 1904. We're doing this because we want to honor Betty McMillan.
sleep sort of disappears when uh, you're with youth and they stay up um, late and they get up early and you're there as a pastor to stay with their counselors after the youth are in bed and be able to hear their woes and, and their joys. Uh, so I forgot to put on my portable mic. I'll go get that in, in a couple of minutes. But this is an introduction to the service. The mic wasn't quite uh, on when, when we heard why you are looking at uh, a, a facsimile of a program, a bulletin that was worshipped on, on February 28, 1904. The reason we had access to this bulletin is because of the good work of Betty Zone. I found it, we looked at it, and said, hey, wouldn't it be cool to worship this bulletin? To, to repeat uh, a historic service that happened at First Church Chanute uh, from more than 100 years ago. And I want to draw your attention to these, these little suggestions for holy waiting. Have you, you seen those yet? Suggestions for holy waiting on the back assembly bulletin. It says, pray earnestly, one, for a solemn heart to approach so near so great God. Two, for an open ear and attentive mind, a tender conscience, a responsive will. Three, that our service may be honest and hearty, that all may have grace to live and power to witness to Jesus Christ. So, sing heartily, pray fervently, and give something at the offertory. <laughs> Don't you love that? That's our great grandmothers and great grandfathers, and they must have been struggling too. Give <laughs> something. I love it. Um, what we want to do, uh, many have a, a wonderful question when we were trying to set the stage. Oh, thanks. I'll get that on eventually. When, when we were trying to think about how to set the stage, I think there's a 1929 car that's outside now. It's been parked outside. We were 1929 Model A Ford. A 1929 Model A Ford. We're going to get a picture of Benny next to that. We were, well, actually, Benny said we probably need to imagine uh, on February 28, 1904, that there were horses and buggies tied up outside the church. So put that in your mind. And, and now, well, let's see, I'll go ahead and turn this on so I'm able to wander around and use a lot of the funny. Yes, thank you.
wearing huge amounts of clothing. So anyway, we will we will proceed now. Are there any any announcements for the good of the cause? The kids are home. Kids are home. Any kids here that are home? Any parents here that are home? I know they're probably coming to the second service. But uh, thank you for your prayers. I understand that they got home safely and without incident. And I think they probably need me home here. Any other announcements? All right, now we're going to get to the joys and concerns. And I need to solicit a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm going to ask one of our one of our leaders to come up and do that so I can take notes. Yes, I can do that. Okay, come on over. We have some joys and concerns we need to take a little this morning. The kids had an amazing trip on, on the mission trip. They were all good, they were all fine, and they had a
and joyful homes. Gracious God, we thank you for the moisture. We thank you for the cool. And now we lift up these families to you, Ron Gordon's and Jan Ray's. We want you to uh, wrap your arms of love around those families. Reassure uh, each member and friend and neighbor that Ron and Jan are in your arms and are at peace and are uh, being restored to complete wholeness. Uh, to the radiant selves that you created in them. We lift up to you, Brother Bro and Dave Olson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer of those laws. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. inside these walls, but outside as well. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Won't you turn in your inserts?
us speak these historic words together from our hearts. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
back for the reading from the New Testament. Listen in, listen in. No, I'm not leaving the church. Okay, my helpers. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the word, worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. Now, you're all too worried about the tables. You've got to be listening to the Word of God. You've got to be listening to the Word of God here. All right? This is a by-faith experiment. We did not rehearse this beforehand. These guys did not know this. I did not find out whether these tables would hold my weight. There barely are. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away, he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach God must believe that he exists and God rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and because an heir to the, the righteousness uh, and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out a place for a place that he was to receive an inheritance. Abraham, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time. He's taking me either direction you want me. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land living in tents. And as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. Okay, thanks. I think we've taken that up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank these guys for helping. This for he looks forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars of heaven and as innumerable as the grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promise. All of these died in faith without having received the promise. But from a distance, from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been seeking, a, if they had been thinking of the land that they left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told, It is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, 
bowing in worship over the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instruction about their burial. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. He was looking ahead to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not afraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had re received the spies in peace. And what more could I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commend commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding his shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Yes. <laughs>
preacher of Hebrews. What a magnificent, magnificent piece of our history. It's not They were starting to lose sight of the goal. They were 
were starting to take their eyes off of Jesus. And so, what the preacher says is, remember these other people. Remember these other people. They didn't receive the reward. They labored for something greater themselves because they believed so firmly in it. The, the way that passage begins is one of the defining moments, the jewels in the Bible, defining faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we heard a litany of names. People who had endured, endured suffering and yet had held on to that cord, had not lost sight of the prize, had given their lives for the sake of something that they weren't going to see happen. People who lived a righteous life, made choices that were based on God's calling and God's will and God's dream for their lives, not their own self-interests, and people who responded to the directions that God gave them and obeyed faithfully to leave their home in the case of Abraham, leave their home, leave their native land, leave everything that they knew, the theaters and the baths on the, on the banks of the, of the Euphrates in the, in the land of Haran, in the city of Haran, and go out into a wilderness place and, and trust this voice that said to a place that I will show you. And oh, by the way, you're going to have a whole bunch of kids. And, and he heard that first at age 75. And he checked back in with God when he was 86. He said, um, did I hear you right? After he left everything and been wandering, did I hear you right? At age 86, he checked back. And, 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 he, and he thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe, um, maybe it's all right if we have a kid sort of on our own. And so Sarah provided uh, her servant, and there was a child, but God said, no, 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 I'm going to provide a child for you. And of course, Hagar laughs when Abraham hears this a third time when he's 99. He's 99. He says, okay, Lord, I believe you, I trust you. Well, it's very clear that this salvation, Lord, is not our doing. This faith is a gift from God. That's what Mother Teresa said to a Hindu who asked her and said, you want us all to become Christians, don't you? You want to change us away from our own way of thinking, our own way of doing? You want to create? You want to... And, and this was in India. And she, she very gently just looked and said, faith is a gift from God. Faith isn't something we own and manipulate. Faith is something we acquire by closeness to God. It's something that fills us up. It's something that we have access to, but it is greater than we are. It holds us. We don't hold it. We rely on God. God doesn't rely on us. God loves us. And so all of these people, Abraham included, trusted in God. And at 99, biologically, this guy was not going to have kids. At 99, Sarah was not going to have kids. We once were lamenting. When I was at Barnville Church up in uh, Marshall County, we were lamenting. Not too far from where Shoney was from. Shoney and his beloved. But uh, we had a council meeting and there were a number of, of ladies who um, you know, were reaching double digits. Like, what can I say? Older folks, you know, older folks at the table. And so when they were, they were saying, we need young people, we need young people. And I said, should I do the Sarah prayer? And they said, no! <laughs> because she had a kid. And she was beside herself with joy. This was God's doing. They couldn't see that that was going to happen. But she had a kid. Now I want you to continue the litany since we're talking about historic names. You know the historic names who held out to the cord, the salvation cord, in this congregation, in the history of its faith life. I want you to name some of those names. Some of them aren't here, some of them still are. But name some of those names of the people who grabbed that cord and held it and helped to transmit this faith and saw the prize but never ever realized the prize because they were laboring for something greater than themselves that others would see. What are some of those names? Bonnie Barnett, others. Dean Foster. Pardon me? Dean Foster. Dean Foster. Let me hear some more. What's the name? Bob Ford. Okay, I don't. I, Bob Riley. Bob Riley. Walker Ford. Dean Sutcliffe. Dean Sutcliffe. Wayman Dunlap. Wayman Dunlap. Genevieve and Wilbur Thompson. Grace Taylor. 
Grace Shaver. Ella Rands. Robert Wolf. Margaret Wolf. Ella Rands. What was it? Ella? Ella Rands. Yes! Ella Rands! B. Flynn. Oh, listen, listen to how we're touching this chord, this chord of salvation, right here in our midst. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, are you ready to grab hold of that chord? Are you ready to grab hold of that chord of salvation and become part of the cloud of witnesses, believing in something that you will not see to its fruition, but believing and trusting in God that God will use your time, your place, your energies, your gifts in order to advance the kingdom of God. I understand there's some people who are grabbing the cords real strongly. On Wednesday nights, I think all the Wana that's here, grabbing the cords real strongly for the sake of transmitting faith, a living, vibrant faith to a generation of kids. I hope that everybody in this congregation is going to grab out of the faith and do what God is calling your heart to do in order to keep us moving on this parabola, this wonderful cord. Two images come to mind. The first one, the 90-year-old guy who's out in the sun at the prime time for planting, and he's planting trees, little seedlings. 90-year-old guy. Kid comes over and says, what the heck are you doing? Why are you? I mean, you're, why? you're never going to see these trees grow up. He says, no, I'm not. But my grandpa, my great-grandpa, they planted trees for me. I planted trees for my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and their grandchildren. Will you see it? No. I wrote a musical once called Two Sides of the Mountain, and it starts out with a focus on Abraham. And there's a little song in it that goes, Abraham's quiet a man, found in a nation, quiet in a nation. Let's see. That's a tip I remember. I wrote an art thing. <laughs> Left his own beloved land, following his Lord's almighty command. Father Abraham, what a man. Father Abraham, what a man. By the end of the musical, it's changed just a little bit. It's a musical that starts in the Old Testament and ends in the New Testament. It ends like this. God had faith enough in us to let his son die, his only son die. God believed enough in us to let his own child die, his only son die.
this about the generations that went before us. The Bible, the stand, the table, the altar, um, the, the pictures, the, the chair, all of these wonderful things, and that baptismal font. Think of the people who have received the sacrament of baptism right there in the back, in the center of our Lord. Now, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain in you always. Oh, 